Time you throw your weight behind a political party that controls two thirds of the government, and that party can't keep the promise that it made to you during election time, and you are dumb enough to walk around continuing to identify yourself with that party, you are not only a chump, but you're a traitor to your race. All right, we are back. I'm Michael. And I'm Lakia. And this is the, the Voice, Voice of, of Reason. Reason. Let's get into it. 22 million black victims of Americanism are waking up and they're gaining a new political consciousness, becoming politically mature. And as they become, uh, develop this political maturity, they're able to see the recent trends in these uh, political elections. They see that the whites are so evenly divided that every time they vote, uh, the race is so close, they have to go back and count the votes all over again. And that they, which means that any block any minority that has a block of votes that stick together is in a strategic position. Either way you go, that's who gets it. You're, you're in a position to determine who go to the White House and who stay in the doghouse. You're the one who has that power. You can keep Johnson in Washington, D.C., or you can send him back to his Texas cotton patch. You're the one who sent Kennedy to Washington. You're the one who put the present Democratic administration in Washington, D.C. The whites were evenly divided. It was the fact that you threw 80% of your votes behind the Democrats that put the Democrats in the White House. The, when you see this, you can see that the Negro vote is the key factor. And despite the fact that you are in a position to, to be the determining factor, what do you get out of it? The Democrats have been in Washington, D.C only because of the Negro vote. They've been down there four years. And they're all other legislation they wanted to bring up, they've brought it up and gotten it out of the way, and now they bring up you. <laughs> and now they bring up you. You put them first and they put you last. Because you're a chump. A political chump. In Washington, D.C., in the House of Representatives, there are 257 who are Democrats. Only 177 are Republican. In the Senate, there are 67 uh, Democrats. Only 33 are Republicans. The party that you back controls two-thirds of the House of Representatives and the Senate, and still they can't keep their promise to you, because you're a chump. Even back then. That's what the Democrats do. They make these grand promises to get the votes of black people and minorities, Hispanics and, and other minorities that they click together and group together. And we're all a, 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 a melting pot of minorities. They use that as a tool to get the votes of the people. But then when they get in office, like you said the other day, they're worried about transgender bathrooms. You know, there's, there's way more pressing issues to deal with. But it seems like they always have a hard time getting to the black issues. Hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like our inner cities and the violence. They all they, they have a lot to say about police reform, but they have nothing to say about the reform of our neighborhoods, the destruction, the lives that are lost in our, in our neighborhoods, the streets in our neighborhoods. You can't walk down the street without your life being in danger. They won't talk about this, but if a police officer kills a black person, it makes national news. If a shooter with an AK-47 shoots up a bunch of people, 14, 20 people, it makes national news. But when 68 people are killed on the 4th of July in Chicago in one weekend, silence. The only ones that cover it is the local news. Mm -hmm. This is how they get us. Mm -hmm. All these grand promises. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just to get our vote, really, because it's like an emotional rallying up. Mm -hmm. You know, they know that race is very important to us. So why not put race in the headlines nationally? Right. As opposed to like what's really affecting our community, which is, you know, black on black crime, violence, everything. You know, that plagues our community. Um, fatherlessness mm -hmm. is a, a, a big one, but no one talks about that. Yeah. Instead of addressing fatherlessness, we prop up the single mother as the new standard. That cannot replace fa fathers in the home. 
we were just talking about this earlier about, you know, our children. We're like, there's literally no reason to beat a child. There's no reason to get aggressive with a child. And my wife was like, I wonder why, you know, growing up, you know, we got such crazy whoopings. And my theory is because there's no father in the home. Let me explain. When I walk in the room, my children have a natural sense of honor and respect for me as a father. They don't act up as much when I'm in the room. When their mother's in the room, they tend to act up more. So my theory is because of that lack of a masculine presence in a lot of our homes, the mother is forced to get extra aggressive in order to control the children. And that's why you have these whoopings that we talk about so much. It's unnecessary when the father is in the home and the father has a masculine presence. It's unnecessary. Anytime you throw your weight behind a political party that controls two thirds of the government and that party can't keep the promise that it made to you during election time and you are dumb enough to walk around continuing to identify yourself with that party, you are not only a chump, but you're a traitor to your race. Shots fired! Shots fired! And what kind of alibi do they come up with? They try and pass the buck to the Dixiecrats. Now, back during the days when you were blind, deaf, and dumb, ignorant, politically immature, naturally you went along with that. But today, as your eyes come open and you develop political maturity, you're able to see and think for yourself. And you can see that a Dixiecrat is nothing but a Democrat in disguise. Mm. You look at the structure of the uh, government that controls this country. It's controlled by 16 senatorial committees and 20 congressional committees. Of the 16 senatorial committees that run the government, 10 of them are in the hands of Southern segregationists. Of the 20 congressional committees that run the government, 12 of them are in the hands of Southern segregationists. And they're going to tell you and me that the South lost the war. You today have, are in the hands of a government of segregationists, racists white supremacists who belong to the Democratic Party but disguise themselves as Dixocrats. A uh, Dixocrat is nothing but a Democrat. Whoever runs the Democrats is also the father of the Dixocrats. And the father of all of them is sitting in the White House. What do you think? Yeah, just uh, that's all that needs to be said. You know, the, the same message applies today. It, it does. It literally applies today. And we keep on giving our vote to these people that don't care about our issues. They only pander to us every election cycle. And then we, we we're disappointed yet again. And yeah. then they blame it. They blame the problems on the previous president. Yeah. And they never take accountability <clears throat> for, for their lack of progress and their lack of dealing with these issues. They, they always point the finger elsewhere. We see it with the president right now. We haven't, you know, inflation, we having gas prices that are crazy. We having um, um, food prices and shortages and um, all types of stuff going on right now. And all he can do is point the finger. It's, Russia, it's Russia. Russia. This is a Russia tax. This is, but you're the president of the of the United States. This is supposed to be the most powerful country in the world, and the most powerful person in the world is supposed to be the president of the United States. And he's not taking accountability. Right. He's playing blame games. He's playing blame games. He's pointing a finger. It's him. It's the, imagine, imagine if you were a CEO of a company and and um the the wages of of your employees was was not you know where it's supposed to be and you had to cut costs and all this type of stuff. And then when they come to you and they say you know how are we gonna fix this, they go. Oh, it's our well, fault. It, it's, <laughs> It's um uh, that company's fault over there. They Ford just they keep it. taxing us. They just no. You need to as a as a leader, as the commander in chief, you need to make a way. You need to figure this out. You need mm -hmm. to get advisors. You need to get economists to figure out how to fix this problem. Mm -hmm. But no, it's it's a Russian tax. <laughs> this is a Russian gas tax. This is a Putin tax. Crazy Craziness. man. All right, well, what did y'all think? Did y'all like this content? Make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thank y'all for tuning in. Bye.